Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Clayface, Batman, and Batwoman 3-pack. This is an Amazon exclusive. I'm very excited for the Batwoman figure, but McFarlane did us dirty. They made us buy a 3-pack just to get the character that we wanted for a long time. I'm a huge fan of the Clayface mega figure. The Rebirth Batman at least is a little bit different from the original release. And of course, there's Batwoman that almost everyone has wanted since day one of the McFarland DC Multiverse line, and we're finally getting her, but she costs so much more than a single release. I'm sure they'll release her as an individual figure, but it's going to be at least a year from now. Did us dirty, but I'm still really happy to have this set. So let's take a look at the packaging, which I don't like the plain black front. I wish we had the transparent front so you could see the figures, but I also understand it's from Amazon, it's not at a retailer store, so they don't have any shoppers to show the product to. Anyway, as you can see at the top, this is part of the Gold Label Collection. A Gold Label figure is simply a retailer exclusive, whether it be Target or Walmart. This particular Gold Label is an Amazon exclusive, ages 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Clayface, Batman, and Batwoman. The top, DC Multiverse. One side of the package, Clayface, Batwoman, and Batman from DC's Rebirth. Other side, totally blank. At the back, you can finally see the characters. Batwoman, the star of the show, Rebirth Batman, and Clayface. They were actually all part of the Bat family and allies in the beginning of Rebirth. At the bottom, we have a bunch of credits, and there is the barcode, in case that helps anybody. So with no further ado, let's open it up. And as always, I did get two of these packs. One of which to open and enjoy, the other one to keep unopened in my complete Batman related unopened action figure collection. All right, now that these figures are out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. Batman comes with a Batarang and a Grapnel Launcher. Batwoman comes with a Batarang and another Grapnel Launcher. And both their Batarangs are half brown. They're stained with clay from Clayface, which is kind of interesting. Clayface is traditionally a Batman villain, but I'm pretty sure in this rebirth pack they're actually working together in the rebirth. There was a team, mostly referred to as Team Detective, Batman, Batwoman, Clayface, Red Robin, Spoiler, Orphan, which was kind of interesting, taking Clayface, who's traditionally a villain, and giving him a path to redemption. Although, I don't believe he lasted that long. At one point, he kind of went bad again, then good again, and then he died. And, I don't know, they probably brought him back. Who knows how the comics are nowadays. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation, and we'll compare them with a bunch of other relevant action figures. I'm excited about this pack and annoyed at the same time. Annoyed because they're forcing you to get this three pack to get Batwoman, a character we all want. But very happy because I want Batwoman. Clayface is my favorite Bat villain, so it's cool to have another one of him. It looks like the paint job is a little better. And then the Rebirth Batman. At least his paint job is considerably different from the other release. Couple quick sort of observations. Batwoman. Really excited for her. She does look good, but she appears to be sort of stuck looking down because her hair is too big. She has what I thought were thigh cuts, but it's just sort of lazy reuse by McFarlane by using the Catwoman thigh high boots and just painting over them. And we'll get to that more in the Batwoman part. We'll check out Batman first then Batwoman, and then we'll finish off with Clayface. Hope you guys enjoy this video, and let's check out Batman. Now one thing I also notice, and it doesn't really bother me too much, I don't see any display stands or collector's cards. Hmm. Here's a copy of Detective Comics number 934. This is the first issue of Detective Comics and the Rebirth. As you can see on the front, Team Detective, Batman, Red Robin, Batwoman, Orphan, Spoiler, and Clayface. I really wish they would finish off Team Detective. We still need Spoiler, Red Robin, and Orphan. So here's Batman. This is Batman based off his look in the Rebirth comics. A modern, comic, normal Batman, and I appreciate that. This figure is a little bit on sort of the smaller side of things in the McFarlane world. McFarlane has almost three different scales, small, medium, and large. Rebirth Batman is a little bit smaller, kind of like Nightfall Batman. Then you have like the three Jokers and Hush Batman, which are enormous. Wish things were a little more consistent. 
They've already released the Rebirth Batman, and this one is done in a much lighter gray. I really appreciate that. He's in the signature Rebirth costume. Very signature bat symbol and belt. Purple on the inside of the cape. He has the Batarang, the grapple gun. So let's take a look. Starting with his face. Face looks pretty good. Nice expression in the brow. Totally white eyes. Short eared cowl. Mouth expression looks good. A little bit thin. Not quite as square jaw as some of the versions. Lips look good. Stern expression. Bat symbol. That signature Rebirth symbol. He's got the lighter costume. The belt. Very signature to the Rebirth look. He's got the fins. Purple on the inside of the cape. Black on the outside. Double jointed elbows. Double jointed knees. Overall, it's a pretty good figure. I think I might prefer the darker color, but we'll check them out together shortly. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I've always liked the Rebirth Batman figure. Just wish he was a tiny bit bigger. I do want to mention that on mine, his ankles are pretty loose. Not horrible, but looser than most of the other McFarlane figures. And another pretty large complaint I have about this guy is his gap between the cowl and his cape. I don't know if it's just mine or they're all like this, but you can totally see the light gray material underneath, and it looks awful. There's a big old gap. I don't know. I don't think I can fix that. I mean, you can squeeze it and kind of cover it up, but it's not going to stay that way. I don't know. Maybe I can heat it up, cover it up. We'll see, but gosh, that damn sure is noticeable. Now let's check out his accessories. These are the same accessories that the single version of the Rebirth Batman came with. Same sculpt of the Batarang and the Grabner Launcher, but this Batarang has a different paint job. And I appreciate that. In my action figure world, Clayface is typically still going to be a villain. So I can put this Batarang to good use. Batarang here. Mostly brown. A little bit of the original black still on there. And it looks the same pretty much on both sides. Then we have the Grabner Launcher. You can see where a hold at the bottom. And then it's got the actual claw here. Now I wish this thing was pegged so you could remove it. But, you know, whatever. Here's Batman holding and getting ready to throw his Batarang. And here he is, holding his grapnel launcher. Now I wanted to check him out. I said the original version of the Rebirth Batman to see what all exactly are the differences. Now the most obvious difference is his overall gray is significantly lighter than the original Rebirth version. But there are some other differences as well. The next biggest one to notice is going to be doesn't have the extra purple lines on the belt. And that's kind of disappointing. So their faces are a little bit different. I would say the flesh tone actually looks better on this newer version. The older one, yeah, it's a little bit pale. Go further down, suit, totally different. Super light gray, super dark gray. This guy's torso always twisted in sort of a weird shape. I don't seem to be having that issue with this guy. Now, the gap here, see the material underneath? He actually has it too, but his material is much darker, so it's not nearly as noticeable. Beyond that, not much else different. Exact same sculpt, exact same articulation, exact same figure, different paint job. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height from bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 6.8 inches tall, which can translate to just over 17 centimeters, and if you go to the top of the ears, about 7 inches tall. Now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course you're going to rotate from side to side, look up at that far, down about that far, pretty nice. Can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint. Goes up about 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest. Increasing the range of motion and covering the large gap that would be there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrists can rotate. And it's going to be hinged as well. His torso, he's got a ball joint. Rotate around, forward and back. Another one in his waist. Rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, pretty good range of motion of his torso area. I'd say you get a little bit more out of the torso than the waist on this guy. Legs, completely does the splits. Not a ball joint, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is minimal, but there. Legs go forward, about that much. Back, not much. Double jointed knees. And notice the bat symbols on his shins there. Then his ankle, forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock, and of course, to articulation. Now let's check him out. Next to some other Rebirth Batman figures. 
Here he is, next to the previous McFarland Rebirth Batman. And here he is, next to the DC Direct, DC Essentials Rebirth Batman. I'm very fond of this figure. Then, next to the Mattel DC Multiverse Rebirth Batman. And now, next to the DC Direct, DC Icons Rebirth Batman. Here are all the different Rebirth Batman figures that I have specifically in this costume. DC Direct, McFarlane, and Mattel. I'm probably going to say that DC Direct DC Essentials is my favorite of the Rebirth Batman figures. But the McFarlane one is pretty nice, the original. Now let's check him out. Next is some other McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. Here he is. Next is some older McFarlane Batman figures. These are all from the comics. Then, with some more McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. These are also from the comics. Then, with some more McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. These are from different various forms of media. Now let's take a look at Batwoman. Batwoman's real name is Kate Kane. The original Batwoman was introduced in 1956 as Kathy Kane. She was actually introduced both Batwoman and Batgirl as sort of girlfriends to Batman and Robin because a ton of people were accusing them of being homosexual, etc., etc. Absolute ridiculousness based off some book called Seduction of the Innocent. Look it up if you haven't heard about it. It's a very crazy, interesting story. This Batwoman is Kate Kane. Sometimes it's said that she's the niece of Kathy Kane. She was introduced into DC Comics in 2009. She's a lesbian. She's dating Montoya at times. And she's a member of the modern Bat family. Actually, a pretty important member. Next to Batman, she's probably his sort of second in command with the overall Bat team. She was part of Team Detective in the Rebirth comics, and it was a pretty cool thing. Finally, we're getting a figure of her, but McFarlane forced us to buy this three-pack just to get this necessary character, and that is pretty damn annoying. So let's take a look at her. I'll start with her head here. It looks pretty good. The face, the cowl, the sort of sculpt there, the eyes, captures the way Batwoman looks in the comics. Pointed ears, red hair. The hair looks fantastic. Going for the down, she has that red bat symbol, similar to the Batman Beyond symbol. Cape is red on the inside, black on the outside, kind of short. She has double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Overall, the figure does look good, but she has some things going against her. Mainly, her head. She's like looking down because her hair is so much in the back and it forces her to look down. That kind of sucks. This is about the best you can do. You cannot really get her to look any more forward. Unless you use her torso and point her up like this. It just doesn't look right. She's leaning way too far back like this. In addition to that, they were lazy and reused the Catwoman from Nightfall parts. And you can see the sort of thigh-high boots. But she doesn't have thigh-high boots. Her boots are down around her shin area. And then we have the sculpted thing here that I thought was a thigh cut at first, but no. So it looks like she has red boots on top of thigh-high boots on top of black spandex. Stupid and lazy. If you're going to reuse these legs, can't you smooth that little part out? My word, come on. Or maybe use the legs from the original Batgirl. She was really tall and didn't have those lines there. The parts already exist. Stop being lazy. And if you're going to be lazy, make better decisions of what you're going to reuse. In addition to that, she's a little bit too short. As I recall, Babelman is a very tall woman. Legs for miles. And this figure here, it's short. She's about the size of the Rebirth Batman. She's probably a little bit smaller than Nightfall Batman, and she should be really tall like an Amazon. Beyond that, I am very happy to have this figure, but she's got a lot of things going against her from the get-go. And the worst of them is her head looking down. I'll try to heave the figure, see if I can sort of push it up further. But it's just designed kind of poorly with the hair. So I took some boiling water, dipped her in there, and it actually made a huge difference. Her head looks fairly straightforward now. I don't know if it's because the hair is soft and I got some wiggle room going on but it looks a lot better like this. Let's see if it holds like that. Still, that might have eliminated my biggest complaint about this figure. And a closer look at her face and head sculpt. I think the hair looks great. I think the cow looks great. The face as a whole looks excellent. They did a great job with that.
Now let's check out the accessories. Another Batarang, and this I believe is a unique Batarang. It's also done in half brown, half black. Then we have our grapnel launcher, which is different than Batman's. It has the grapnel with a little bit of wire. Once again, I wish it was pegged so you could remove it, have it displayed both ways. Here's Batwoman holding and getting ready to throw her Batarang. And then here she is holding her grapnel launcher. Now I wanted to check out the reuse between this Rebirth Batwoman and the Nightfall Catwoman. And there's actually more reuse than I realized. So, obviously their heads are totally different. The chest is actually the same piece. You can see the line going up and down the middle on both of them. Obviously they added the bat symbol to her. The stomach has that same line going down. The crotch diaper piece, it's a little bit different. Obviously this one's a belt on. The crotch area is a little bit less prominent on Batwoman, how should we say? I notice the legs are 100% the same. You can even see the little sort of wrinkles. Same place on both the figures. Giving you that horrible, unnecessary boot cut. Well, it's not exactly a boot cut, but boot line here that should not be on Batwoman. I just don't understand why they can't take a little bit of time to smooth that out. Then the arms, we've got the same thing going on. She's got these gloves that go up to her bicep. You can see the same line here. Lazy as hell. Come on, McFarlane. You couldn't literally just have someone sand that down and then send it back to the factory. The feet, bottom part, a little bit different. Although they just sort of sculpted the boots on top of the same Catwoman mold. So, definitely some lazy aspects here. I still really like this Batwoman figure. But man, it could have been better so easily. But if you're going to be lazy, and we expect some of that, we expect reuse just the way it is. But be smart about it. You already have more appropriate parts. I'd rather them take the three Jokers back or a leg here and just simply paint the boots red, even though it's not exactly accurate. But come on, you could at least use the top part of the leg that doesn't have that cut on it. Just saying, reuse is okay, but you have better parts you could have used from. Could have done top half of the leg here, then the bottom half of Catwoman's leg. Yeah, maybe it wouldn't really work right, so maybe I'd be overly critical. But my god, sand down this piece and this piece, or use maybe her arms and her legs. I don't know, something. You have plenty of other parts, and there's a ton of other female characters we could have pulled from as well. Now, I know a lot of people are also complaining about the Supergirl figure using the Catwoman's legs, but I think that's less offensive. The boots that she has, yeah, they shouldn't be quite as high, but at least it's hidden under the skirt, whereas Batwoman's is right in plain face, and she has sculpted boots lower, and then sculpted boots higher for boots that she's not even wearing. I don't know, it's just bothering the hell out of me. So you're telling me that McFarland Toys, a very successful company financially, couldn't pay some guy 20 bucks or 100 bucks to simply smooth out this sculpt, maybe make a new sculpt, maybe make a bigger decision on which sculpt to reuse, that seems perplexing, mind-boggling. I could smooth this thing out with a little bit of Sculpey, no problem. Maybe file it down. I don't know. It just seems so obvious. And now let's check out her height. From bottom to the top of her head and hair. Standing at about 6.8 inches tall, similar to Batman. Going to translate to just over 17 centimeters. And it go to the top of her ears, about 6.9 inches tall. She's too short. 7-inch scale. She's a very tall woman. She should be like 7.2 inches tall, something like that. Just my two cents. The original Batgirl figure from the first wave is a lot taller than her. More parts they could have drawn from. Although a lot of that wouldn't have worked. But they could have easily made her a little bit taller. A little bit would have gone a long way. Now for her articulation. And I will admit, her head is fighting me every step of the way. It's trying to look down again. Can rotate from side to side. The hair can actually get all the way over, but notice how it's making her look down. Look up and down about that far. Heating it up really did help. Makes a big difference there. I don't know if it just freed up some of the range of motion or the hair gave some give, but it's a lot better. Cannot really tilt her head from side to side. The hair is going to obstruct that. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out about 90 degrees. Up, down, around. She's got a butterfly joint between her shoulder and chest. Increasing the range of motion and covers the large gap that would be there. 
looks like a bicep cut and it's there but it's with her glove the glove she doesn't have double jointed elbows her wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged her torso she's got a ball joint rotate around forward and back another one in her waist rotate around forward and back between the two very good range of motion in her torso area i'd say you get about the same amount in her waist and torso in her legs completely does the splits not a ball joint McFarland style hip joints rotation minimal but there legs go forward almost all the way back not much double jointed knees and then our ankles forward and back rotate tilt rock and of course to articulation master crowd next to some other batwoman figures here she is next to the dc direct 52 weeks batwoman this is the first batwoman they made and holds a special place in my heart even though her articulation is quite limited this is the only one we had for so many years and here she is next to the mattel dc multiverse batwoman she is not very much taller than the mattel counterpart kind of surprising here maybe a 0 0.2 inch difference or something like that so here would be all the different batwoman figures in her traditional costume dc direct mcfarlane and mattel i think mcfarlane is the best one of these although it has its own flaws i'm really fond of the other two as well dc direct because i had it for so many years to fill that slot and the mattel one because she was definitely the best until now and here she is next to the dc direct bombshells batwoman this is kathy kane but she's not in her traditional batwoman outfit by any stretch of imagination sort of like an elseworlds what if in like a 50s sort of baseball female type outfit of course bombshells are made to be sexied up here are all the different kate kane batwoman figures that i have in fact these are all of them that they've made here she is next to the dc direct silver age batwoman now, I always thought these were supposed to be the same character. They just sort of reinvented her and brought her back for the New 52. But that's not exactly accurate, at least from my research. It looks like she's Kate Kane, and she's Kathy Kane, and she's often referred to as the niece of Kathy Kane. I kind of like that. I think it's kind of interesting. Now, that is not the only Batwoman figure that anyone has made. Here she is next to a DC Direct. Superman, Batman, Batwoman. I don't actually know who this is when I looked it up on Wikipedia. It said her real name is unknown, but she has the identity of Batwoman as well. A different Batwoman, though. And this is not even the only Batwoman figure that McFarlane has made. McFarlane made this Batman Beyond Batwoman figure, but this is not Kate Kane. This is Elena Grayson. I believe she's the daughter of Dick Grayson. But this is in a potential what if Batman Beyond comic future. I'd say it's not the official DC canon future. If there even is such a thing, there are so many options to choose from. Here's Batwoman, next to a couple of McFarlane Batman figures. These guys are on the smaller side of things. Batwoman is just too short. Look at her next to the Nightfall Batman, and he's not a really tall figure. I feel like Kate Kane is a really tall woman. And here she is, next to a couple more McFarlane Batman figures. These guys are on the medium size of things. Then... Next to a couple more McFarlane Batman figures, these are on the larger side of things. Now, if you didn't think she was too short before, tell me what you think now. Here are all the modern comic members of the Bat family McFarlane has made so far. We have The Signal, Barbara Gordon Batgirl, Nightwing, Batman, Batwoman, Robin, Red Hood, and Azrael. Technically, I probably shouldn't put Azrael in this display as he's specifically from White Knight, but the costume is very similar to the costume he uses in the comics. Now you may wonder, why is Tim Drake not on here? Well, they haven't made a Rebirth version yet. He was Red Robin, and now he's Robin again. The version they most recently came out with, you could fudge it in here, but that's actually from the 90s. And you may wonder, why is Batwing not here? Well, they made Batwing, but they made the David version, not the Luke Fox version, which is part of the Rebirth team. Now the characters were most notably missing. Spoiler, Orphan, Huntress, there are plenty of others. But those are the ones I really want them to make, as well as, of course, a Rebirth version of the Tim Drake, whether it be his Red Robin costume or his new Robin costume. Still, it is very cool to add Batwoman to the mix. We've needed her for a very, very long time, and she's finally here.
and I'll give a spoiler orphan and Tim Drake and I'll be a very happy person. Now let's take a look at Clayface. Now Clayface has already been released and it's pretty much the exact same figure. This one does have a crisper paint job and we'll check that out shortly. Now I've seen a lot of people complain about this Clayface figure. It feels cheap, it feels hollow, and I mean there's some truth to that. But I think he looks fantastic. Clayface is my favorite Batman villain. This was my figure of the year when it came out. I really like this figure. I really like this character. I really like the detail in this thing. And this one is even better than the other one. Now, I'm not really happy to have to buy a second one. And if I'm going to have a second one, my God, could you not include some attachments, like a big sort of spike ball for a hand or something like that? That being said, let's take a look at him. So this is Clayface. And this particular version is Bezo Carlo. It's the original one. And it was sort of established that being in his clayface form, his brain was like in mush and not working properly, and that's why he became a villain. And Batman was helping him through that. He was on his path to redemption. But I believe he died, and I don't know if he'd come back or not. Still, I prefer my clayface as a villain, especially the Basil Carlo version. This figure looks really nice, but there's some truth. It's kind of hollow, cheap plastic feeling, but looks great, and this one looks better than the original. His face here yellow eyes, he's got that sort of signature brow, he has teeth way inside his mouth, articulated jaw, gives him some different expressions there. He's got little faces all over him, kind of creepy, kind of weird. The detailing is really, really nice. Different shades of brown, light, dark, everything in between. The sculpt is top notch. Yes, I can see why people complain, it's really this part of the plastic that feels that way. But you don't need this guy to be a five pound heavy block. Single jointed elbow, more faces. His articulation is pretty weak, as I recall. His feet are pretty wide. It makes it pretty easy to stand because this guy is kind of top heavy. His arms are very heavy. More faces in the back. Like I said, would have been nice to get some sort of attachment. Some sort of major difference besides a slightly better paint job. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I really think the detail on this guy is nice. Top notch sculpt. Now I wanted to check out the differences between this new 3 pack clay face and the original Mega Figure version. This new one is on the left, the original one on the right. You can see the older one is a lot darker. This one, the paint shop brings out the sculpt quite a bit more. Beyond that, it's 100% the same figure. Same articulation, same sculpt, etc. Just looking at the detailing on the two guys, just a lot more bland on the original version. Like the face on the leg. And then his face on the leg. Just overall new one looks a lot better, a lot more like the clay face that I know and am familiar with. It kind of reminds me of the Devastator. The single release on the left is much darker than the later two-pack release on the right. At least there are some differences though. Now that you've taken a pretty good look at the figure and its life accessories, although what could he possibly come with besides attachments for the hands, and that would be a pleasure to have. Now let's check his height. From bottom to the top, well, not top of his head, top of his back, which is the tallest point. Stands about eight and a half inches tall, which can translate to about 21 and a half centimeters. Now for his articulation, and like I said, it's pretty limited. Head has some kind of a ball joint. You can kind of rotate it around. You don't really get much at all out of it. I mean, you can go up and down just the tiniest little bit. Not really side to side. You can kind of rotate it, but it's Really, really weak. The articulate jaw is quite nice. I mean, you can kind of have him sort of looking down. Shoulders on a ball joint. Go out. Full 90 degrees. Just big, big and bulky. Elbows. Very, very tight. I guess that's about as far as he goes extended. <laughs> it goes in like one click. What is the point? can rotate his wrist, rotate, hinged, ball joint his torso, 
rotate around. He's got sort of two ball joints here, so gives him a good range of motion there. And it's a lot rubbery, not the hard plastic on top. Tilt from side to side. Go around quite a bit. So no complaints about that. Just the elbows. Ugh. Legs at ball joints. Then go out really far. You can do a karate kick. Forward all the way. Back all the way. Knees, barely anything with rotation. So, not super articulated, but he's a big giant monster and he fits the bill. Looks excellent. Now let's check him out. Next to some other Clayface figures. And I have a lot. And I mean a lot. So here he is, next to the original Mega Figure version. Slightly different paint job. This one, a little bit better. Not a huge difference. And here he is, next to the Mattel DC Multiverse build a figure Clayface. This Mattel Clayface is probably my favorite of all the Clayface figures that I have. I really like the way it looks. I like how articulated he is. I like his size. Both these Clayface figures are actually based off the exact same thing. The DC Rebirth, Team Detective. They're both based on Carlo. They're both based off Clayface as a good guy. They do look quite different as different people draw Clayface different ways. And if you want, since they look so different, you could say, hey, one's Basil Carlo, one's Matt Hagen, and have them working together. That's pretty cool if you ask me. And now, next to a little bit older Mattel DC Superheroes Clayface. I really like this Clayface figure as well. A little bit small compared to some of the newer offerings, but he's still bigger than your average figure. And he was the best Clayface for a really long time. Here's this Clayface next to a DC Direct Batman the M8 series Clayface. Another solid release. I always wish DC Direct released the new Batman Adventures Clayface also. And here, next to the DC Direct Arkham City Clayface, this is a large, oversized deluxe figure that puts this mega figure to shame, at least as far as size goes. Here's this Clayface, next to a larger Mattel 12-inch scale Clayface. This is from a 3-pack. This Clayface sort of had like a lava theme going on. Doesn't really make a lot of sense, but this is an officially licensed Clayface figure. Then. Next to the Mattel DC Multiverse 4-inch scale Arkham City Clayface. It's 4-inch scale, but the figure itself is about 6.5 inches tall, maybe 7 inches. It works good for sort of a regular size Clayface to move around your 7-inch and 6-inch scale action figures. And now, next to an older Kenner Legends of the Dark Knight Clayface. This is sort of the first 7-inch scale Batman figures out there. Clayface is pretty cool. Here he is, next to some kitty Clayface figures. I believe the one on the left is from Super Friends, and the one on the right is Imagine X. The one on the left is a pretty big figure. Pretty nice for your 7 inch collection. And here he is, next to some Kenner. Batman the M8 series Clayface figures. They made three different variations. Then, next to the Mattel, the Batman animated series Clayface. They also made three variations of him. This one was Ethan Bennett, police officer. Then, next to Mattel, Power Attack Clayface. This is intended for a smaller 3.75 inch scale, but he's an oversized figure, so it kind of works. Clayface can be pretty much any shape or size. And now, next to a Clayface Funko Pop. This is the only Funko Pop I have in my entire collection. And here, next to a Spin Master Clayface, also for a smaller scale. Here he is, next to a Clayface Mini Mate. And now, with some custom Clayface figures. Here he is, next to a custom Basil Carlo, the first Clayface, in his original origin he was a movie actor and they sort of recast him or maybe make his film and he put a clay mask on called himself clayface started murdering people he had no actual powers the second clayface was matt hagan he's pretty much the big clay monster that everyone's familiar with then the third clayface was preston payne here's a custom preston payne he wears this protective suit not to protect himself but to protect others from him anything he touches melts and burns away and i have this figure that i put next to him this is sort of the dummy or mannequin that he thinks is his wife he melted his wife and then carries a mannequin around thinking it's still her he is total crazy here he is next to the fourth clay face this is sandra fuller lady clay and here next to a custom clay face figure i made out of a marvel legends thing figure then a custom clay face i made out of a marvel legends sandman figure with a jigsaw head and here, with another custom clay face I made out of another Marvel Legends Sandman figure. 
in here with another custom Clayface figure. I believe this is made out of an Incredible Hulk David Banner figure in here with another custom Clayface. I bought this one on eBay a long time ago. It's made out of a Hulk Abomination figure. Then with another custom Clayface figure. This one's pretty crappy. Got this one on eBay a long time ago as well. It's made from an older Spawn figure. I don't think it's Violator. Another large oversized figure like that though. I threw this giant Freddy Krueger thing on my Clayface shelf. I thought one day I would paint this brown and use this as another version of Clayface. Here's my entire collection of Clayface action figures. Like I said before, this is my favorite Batman villain. I have pretty much every Clayface figure in every scale. And then a ton more custom ones on top of that. Here's Clayface. Next to Mattel, DC Universe Classics Batman. This is a mud splatter Batman from a two-pack Feats of Clay with Batman and Clayface. Here's a look at this reverse set. Batman, Clayface, and Batwoman on a rooftop overlooking Gotham. Team Detective. Now let's check them out. Next to some other recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here they are. Next to another recent Amazon exclusive. This is the Atomic School vs. Superman 2-pack. And here they are. Next to the Ultimate Batman Movie 6-pack. Then, next to some more recent Amazon exclusive figures. These are the Glow in the Dark figures. John Stewart Green Lantern, Swamp Thing, and Batman the Infected. And now, with some Entertainment Earth exclusive figures, we have the Sketch, Reaper, Superman, and the Batman Who Laughs. And then the Black Light, Infinite Frontier, Joker, and Scarecrow. Here they are, next to another recent Amazon exclusive figure. This is the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman. This is the one that came with the Batmobile. And here they are, next to the two most recent McFarlane Mega figures. The Justice Buster and Anti-Monitor. Then, with the Hush Superman, the Tim Drake Robin, and both versions of the DC Classics Riddler. And now, with some recent McFarlane Toy Store exclusive gold label figures, we have the Patina variant of Superman in his Unchained Armor and Superboy Prime. Then, Catman and Dick Grayson Robin. Here they are, next to the Blue Beetle Movie Wave. We have the regular Blue Beetle, Carapace, and Battle Mode Blue Beetle. And here, with the first wave of McFarlane Collector's Edition figures, we have both versions of the first appearance Superman, both versions of Abyss, and both versions of the Alan Scott Green Lantern. And finally, next to some Target exclusive Joker Eyes stuff. So overall, it's a really nice action figure set. I'm a huge Clayface fan, as you can probably tell from the video, but... I didn't feel like I needed another clay face that's damn near exactly the same. I've been wanting a Batwoman figure since day one. The Rebirth Batman, you know, I'm okay with getting another Rebirth Batman with a completely different paint job. That's okay with me. Getting Batwoman is absolutely awesome. But having to pay for two figures I didn't necessarily want, that is annoying. Especially when one was an expensive mega figure. Now Batwoman... I am very happy to have her, but she has a lot of flaws as I went over and beat that dead horse to the stick during this video. But I still like her. I like her a lot. She's a star of the show here. Now, if she was a little bit taller and didn't have some of the sculpting lazy issues, I'd easily give her an 8. Head, the hair is fantastic. But she's too short, and they took a bunch of shortcuts being lazy, even though they could have made so many other decisions. I'm still going to give her a 7 out of 10. I like her a lot. I'm really happy to have a 7-inch scale Batwoman, even though she's not even a full 7 inches tall. Almost want to give her a 6, but I'm really happy to have her in my collection. Happy to fill that spot. Clayface here. I really like the figure. I know there are some things to complain about. The figure feels kind of hollow, at least the torso. It's hard plastic mixed with soft plastic. The articulation in the arms, the shoulders, the elbows... The wrists, it's horrible. But man, I really like that figure. He's going to get an 8 out of 10. And then Batman there, once again, a little bit too short, but I like the suit. I like the Rebirth costume. I like the fact this is a Rebirth set based off Team Detective. Going to give Batman a 6.5 out of 10. I'm enjoying Batman more than him, but she has just as many flaws, if not more. I like the set. I don't love it. I really wish they put more effort into Batwoman. I really wish they gave Clayface a different hand. I'm okay with the differences on Batman. If they had given Clayface at least one different hand, made Batwoman a little bit taller, this set would probably be an 8.5 out of 10. But, as it is, 
as a whole, I'm probably going to give it a 7 out of 10. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add it the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.